Hey all, welcome to Share Trek. This is Raj here. Uh, friends, um, uh, the market was very nice today. Of course, uh, I was a bit uh, dismayed to see that uh, Ginkgo Bioworks did not do well. Uh, but it has not fallen too much, so I'm still hopeful for it. But overall, it has been a good day. And uh, uh, friends, we have seen CRISPR stock take off significantly, and I had highlighted that in an earlier video. Suffice to say that those who have CRISPR stock right now are, ha are happy. Uh, in my earlier video on uh, CRISPR therapeutics a while ago, I had uh, celebrated the completion of the rolling BLA for Exacel. Today we have some more positive news uh, in this area and that's what we are going to discuss. But before we proceed further, uh, please subscribe if you have not done so already because more than 60% uh, of our viewers have not subscribed as per YouTube stats. So if you all subscribe or even if half of you subscribe, uh, we can reach the magical 4000 subscriber number in a few days. So I urge you to uh, subscribe. It's absolutely free uh, in case you haven't done so. That said, let's get started. <music> Welcome back. Vertex and CRISPR Therapeutics have uh, continued to make progress towards a potentially landmark approval as they announced uh, that European Medical Agency or EMA has validated their approval applications for Exacel, confirming that all the elements needed for its uh, scientific assessment are already uh, present and they do not need anything else any further. The applications were filed uh, in late 2022 with EMA. And uh, Exacel is an autologous uh, cell therapy uh, treatment for sickle cell disease and transfusion dependent uh, beta thalassemia in advanced clinical trials, as you know. And uh, this means that CRISPR Cas9 will be used to edit a patient's own uh, hematopoietic stem cells, uh, modifying it and then uh, processing it for quality and then multiplying those cells uh, that can produce uh, high levels of uh, fetal hemoglobin. Uh, and this whole um, uh, multiplied uh, quality controlled uh, modified edited cells will be ready for transplant into the patient uh, to treat the patient who is suffering from TDT who need to take regular transfusion and uh, face uh, unavoidable uh, vascular occlusive uh, crises which are very painful and uh, give them a one time uh, treatment and uh, relief for a lifetime. So that's the promise of uh, Exacel. So it's really exciting to see the progress that is being made on the European front now. Exacel happens to have the prime designation from EMA uh, and this cuts down the review time from 210 days which is typical for those that do not have prime designation uh, to 150 days. So it saves them around 60 days which is almost uh, two full months. Uh, starting, uh, assuming that they have uh, started the completion of their submission to EMA on 1st of June, uh, I would say that uh, 150 days would take us to the Q4 of uh, this year, uh, which is not uh, very, very, very far away. And uh, when Exacel um, might probably win approval, say let's uh, let's say in the uh, fourth quarter of this year, uh, then the price also has to start moving to keep it up. But before we start counting our chickens, I'd like to just go for a brief uh, uh, revisit a little bit of history. Uh, CRISPR could potentially uh, become available in uh, Europe for treatment of TDT and SCD, but CRISPR is not the first uh, uh, therapy to be available uh, in Europe for this purpose. Uh, a brief snippet of history shows that uh, challenges are ahead because Bluebird had approved, uh, had, had had the approval for its uh, Zinteglo uh, in Europe as early as 2019. But as the pricing was too high, um, for some reason, Bluebird decided to withdraw from Europe. So we need to see how Exacel will be priced and uh, marketed if approved uh, in Europe. Uh, on the positive side, uh, the absence of competition in Europe uh, gives CRISPR a free run of the market. So we'll have to wait and see how um, CRISPR and Vertex will price their uh, product, uh, how, how they are going to structure the offering uh, to overcome the problems. They are definitely going to market in Europe. Uh, I would say that because they already knew that uh, Bluebird had withdrawn Zinteglo after pricing it at a particular price level. They still went ahead and made submissions to uh, EMA. So they definitely have an intention to be there, but it'll be interesting to see how they uh, proceed. 
I don't want to revisit the price charts uh, for CRISPR as we have already done that in a recent video of CRISPR. Uh, however, suffice to say that despite a few days of weakness, I think CRISPR is uh, on the upward trajectory. I suspect FDA and EMA will uh, uh, approve Exacel more or less around the same time. Uh, therefore, there is uh, no suspense uh, when it comes to um, uh, the U.S. market as Bluebird has already uh, successfully um, uh, marketed Zinteglo uh, and established a price point and it has also made arrangement with uh, insurance companies or pays. So this should provide a template for Exacel uh, to be released in the market or maybe CRISPR and Vertex will come with their own unique approach um, for marketing Exacel and for pricing Exacel. The European market is the one that uh, we need to watch out for uh, given recent history. Uh, meanwhile, I have some other uh, bullish news as well. Uh, in the recent weeks, uh, UBS Group AG has been increasing its uh, stake in uh, competitors uh, to uh, CRISPR like uh, Beam Therapeutics, uh, Intelia and Bluebird Bio. Uh, UBS um, that had around uh, 136,000 shares, I believe, uh, bought a whooping uh, 543,264 shares of Bluebird uh, in the recent weeks, taking the total ownership to around 681,513 uh, shares. So that's a big uh, number of shares. With this investment, um, uh, I am not too uh, worried about uh, Bluebird running out of cash uh, because uh, UBS is a, is a big uh, cor a big company, and uh, I'm I'm feeling that this move is really bullish for Bluebird, and we should see that reflected in the price uh, price chart as well. Likewise, UBS owned around 8,000 shares of Beam and has now purchased additional 130,546 shares, uh, taking its total holdings to around 138,705. Uh, shares so that's another big commitment into genomics similarly U UBS um, uh, acquired an additional 132,643 shares of Intelia to take its total holding of Intelia to 181,611 shares so overall it seems UBS is bullish on genomics and gene editing but before you feel sad you should uh, note that UBS already has 448,635 shares of CRISPR therapeutics, and that's a good chunk of CRISPR shares. So uh, overall, I think UBS is very bullish on uh, genomics and gene editing and gene therapy. So this brings me to an end of this video, my friends, uh, with a very, very positive note. Uh, I hope you liked it, and I hope those of you who are having CRISP uh, CRISPR, like our uh, good friend, Michael Methoff, uh, I think uh, you guys are all going to be uh, really delighted to see all this uh, big institution pouring money into the genomic sector. And of course, we have seen our uh, shares also moving upward uh, recently. So it's all starting to look good. I hope the debt ceiling crisis also gets uh, taken care of and we somehow managed to see a uh, positive market coming up. Uh, I don't want to go into the macroeconomics because the macroeconomics is looking pretty, pretty bleak, uh, but I'm going to be uh, very optimistic and I'm going to hope for the very best to happen for all of us. So friends, with that said, uh, uh, please do not forget to press the like button uh, to help our channel with the YouTube algorithm. And as I mentioned earlier, we just need a few more subscribers to touch the 4,000 mark. If you have not yet subscribed, please subscribe and help us reach that milestone. Thanks and have a great day. Bye for now.